Ladies and gentlemen, I want to make the question before you as authentic and personal as possible. Imagine that when you leave here tonight, you learn that your child's kidneys are failing and that without a transplant, she will die. The problem for you is how to obtain an organ for her. She could receive one from a living donor, but she and both she and the donor can live quite well with one healthy kidney. But what if no relative or friend is both compatible and willing to donate? Well, you look to be um, a reasonably well-heeled uh, group, so perhaps you might pay someone to supply, her, su supply this superfluous kidney and thereby save your child's life. Alas, that would be illegal. You, the vendor, you, the vendor, and anyone who aids you in this will be subjected to prison imprisonment. Odd, isn't it? That if she were attacked by an assailant, you were permitted to use deadly force to save her life. But when she is attacked by disease, you may not pay a willing vendor to provide an organ. Perhaps this rests on the principle that the rich should not get what the poor are precluded from obtaining. Well then, a private charity or government agency should step in and purchase organs from willing donors and distribute them on the basis of need. No, that is also forbidden. No one, no institution, no government agency may pay a living donor. Well then, perhaps she can receive a deceased donor organ. Yes, if she is lucky. Now, as it happens, something between 25% and 60% of organs suitable for transplantation are recovered from the deceased. What happens to the rest? They are buried and burned. Why doesn't a private party or a charity or the government step in and purchase those life-saving organs? Bizarre as this may sound, the law draws no distinction between organs from the living and organs from the deceased. Here, too, offering or accepting compensation for deceased donor organ is a felony. Our position is not that every conceivable market in human organs is ethically acceptable. Rather, it is that at least some are. Our opponents, on the other hand, object to and would prohibit any and all personal reward being offered to providers of organs. They oppose payments for living donation. They oppose payments to next of kin for the organs of a deceased relative. They oppose offering an options contract to healthy people for delivery of their organs after death. They even oppose the life share system of giving a priority to transplant organs to those willing to make the commitment to their own deceased organ do donation. Though in this debate we are not arguing in favor of any particular proposal to reward providers, I will outline one such proposal the one with which I am most closely associated, an options market in deceased donor organs. I do so in part because I crafted this proposal precisely to try to accommodate every ethical objection I had heard, whether I thought it worthy or not. I leave it to you to judge if there is any substantial eth ethical objection that should bar its adoption. The market I propose is one in which healthy individuals might contract for the sale of their organs and tissue for delivery after their death. If the vendor's organs are retrieved and transplanted, a payment in the range of $5,000 for each major organ would be made to a person or institution chosen by the donor. What of the objection to the poor being coerced by poverty to endanger their health by selling their organs? I repeat, in an options market, organs would only be acquired from the dead. No one need be induced or even permitted to sacrifice his health or bodily integrity for money. The donation of the organs of the deceased by both rich and poor is currently strongly encouraged precisely because most of us believe that surrendering the organ represents no sacrifice to the donor. But doesn't employing a market mean that organs will be allocated on the basis of willingness to pay, and so the rich will be able to buy organs that the poor are precluded from obtaining? Some things, it is believed, are literally too vital to permit their allocation by ability to pay. Had I the time, I would challenge this objection and argue that there are fewer ethical problems in allowing people to sacrifice their own treasure to save the lives of those they love than exist under what I, but not, not my colleague Dr. Friedman, um, view as the self-righteous yet cramped and craven and misguided UNAS system of allocation. But alas, time does not allow for that. 
For now, I must underscore that my proposed options market does not speak to the question of to whom the organs will be allocated, only how they will be acquired from the original owner and possessor. My proposal is consistent with and can accommodate any conceivable system of acquisition and allocation, including purchase by a government agency, allocation solely on the basis of medical criteria, and provision to recipients at no charge. Note also <coughs> that the options market does not require next of kin to traffic in the flesh of their loved ones. Instead, it is one in which people contract to sell their own organs when they are healthy for delivery after their death, thereby taking the next of kin out of the decision-making process. The central premise, not merely of my proposal, but of all the others as well, is an obvious, even banal economic proposition. If you compensate people for something, they will provide more of it than if you don't. Every economist who has written on the question, including Nobel Prize winner Gary Becker, has argued in favor of using personal incentives to increase the supply of transplant organs. The price of the prohibition on the sale of human organs is the death of many thousands of people each year. One minute. Were the suffering and death of the, vi of the victims of this pernicious policy more visible, the stale and empty pieties about the sacred human body being bespoiled by the profane market would be revealed for the vacuous moral posturings that they are. Such moralizing, rather than reflecting an adherence to noble principles, instead bespeaks a fanatical adherence to abstract, inapposite principles by those who are well isolated from the horrific human consequences of their folly. It is not the payment for organs that offends human dignity, but rather the fanatical unwillingness to save thousands of lives by permitting such payments that is a great offense to human dignity. Thank you. Thank you.